Has China threatened the United States sea supremacy with its newly developed aircraft carrier? Well, this might be the case because this newly developed sea beast is equipped with the required capabilities to overthrow the renowned USS Gerald and strengthen China's naval capabilities. This unexpected development has shocked not only the United States, a nation that boasts of being at the forefront of technological advancement, but also Iran and Russia. How is this newly developed aircraft better than the United States ship? How did the United States respond to this imminent threat? Join us as we delve into the details of China's secret $13 billion aircraft carrier that shocked America, Iran, and Russia. China has chosen the perfect time to unveil its brand new aircraft carrier. With the current geopolitical tension and major conflicts, like the wars in Russo-Ukrainian war, and the recent conflict between Israel and Iran, this carrier has posed an additional threat to China's greatest adversary, the United States. While the U.S. has ruled over the seas for a very long period of time, China is ready to take over the reins and has taken a huge step towards this with a $13 billion investment in its new aircraft carrier. Prior to this new and expensive development, no other nation on Earth has a larger naval fleet than Asia. This nation possesses an insane number of warships and not even the United States can boast of this. China has taken a huge step towards attaining sea supremacy with this new carrier and even the United States is shocked at the futuristic designs that this aircraft carrier is designed with. Before June 17, 2022, China had the same number of aircraft carriers as the United Kingdom. But on that same day, China launched the Type 003 Fujian, which became the world's biggest aircraft carrier that runs on conventional power. And it's the third one China has. Prior to the invention of the Type 003, the United States USS Gerald was the biggest and most powerful aircraft ever developed. Before Fujian, there was the Liaoning, which China bought from Ukraine after the dissolution of the Soviet Union. The Liaoning, also known as Type 001, was the first aircraft carrier used by the People's Liberation Army Navy Surface Force. At first, it was considered a training ship meant to help the Navy practice and learn about aircraft carrier operations. However, after some upgrades and more training, in late 2018, Chinese state media said that the ship would start doing combat duties in 2019. Then came the 70,000-ton Type 002 Shandong, which was the first aircraft carrier China made itself. But it was based on the design of the Liaoning. The Type 003 Fujian, however, is very different and advanced. It has a new design, unlike the ones before it, and actually resembles American aircraft carriers more. Since it was launched, the Fujian has been getting ready to start its official service. China has recently released video footage showing the aircraft carrier being tested while it's docked, including testing its main engines. The ship was also seen testing its advanced electromagnetic catapults for launching fighter jets. Right now, it's almost finished being prepared before it goes through sea trials. These trials are the final test before the ship is officially given to the Chinese Navy, probably next year. The Type 0003 carrier is supposed to use steam turbines and electromagnetic catapults, while previous Chinese carriers launch planes using ski jumps. According to Chinese military commentator Song Zhongping, Fujian has something called an integrated power system. It is expected to be about the same size as two other big carriers, the Soviet Ulyanovsk and the American supercarriers. At first, people thought it would be around 300 meters long, but later they realized it's actually 316 meters long with a wide flight deck. Some even compare it to the American Kitty Hawk class carriers. Initially, it was thought to weigh around 80,000 to 85,000 tons, but newer assessments, including satellite images, suggest it might actually be closer to 100,000 ton. The Type 003 is China's first aircraft carrier that helps aircraft take off with catapults. It has three of these catapults, two at the front and one at the back. Some people believe that it might also have weapons underneath the flight deck for defense, like missile pods and close-in weapon systems. In the 1990s, an analyst named Robert Farley thought that the aircraft carrier would be the biggest and most advanced aircraft carrier ever made outside of the United States, and his thoughts were not far-fetched. Originally, the Type 002 was supposed to use steam catapults, but in 2013, Rear Admiral Yin Zhuo mentioned that China's next carrier would have electromagnetic catapults instead. Also, media saw several prototypes in 2012, 
and aircrafts that could use these catapults were tested. Switching to electromagnetic catapults probably led to the carrier being bigger than previous ones that were developed in China. The carrier's construction started mid-2010, and while the exact date at which it started is not certain, the national interest said it was in March 2015. The diplomat believes that the initial work began in February 2016, and in March 2017, the Shanghai Jiangnan Shipyard Group got the go-ahead to proceed. But tests on electromagnetic and steam catapults caused some delays. However, by November 2017, the Navy had a system to power electromagnetic catapults, so construction on the Type 003 could continue. In May 2020, big sections of the carrier were moved from where they were made to a staging area. Then in July 2020, they were put into a dry dock. By early September 2020s, most of the big sections that make up the bottom and middle of the ship were in the dock, but the very front of the ship was still missing. Pictures taken from above suggested that the ship would be about 300 meters long, almost as long as China's other carriers. It would also be about 40 meters wide. In the middle of 2020, some people in China thought the ship would be launched mid-2022. But in September 2020, a person from the diplomat said it probably wouldn't be launched until at least mid-2022. In July 2021, pictures from space showed that the construction of the carrier was going well. They were adding important parts like the tall structure on top and the three catapult launch systems onto the hull. Then on November 10, Bloomberg said that according to a report from the Center for Strategic and International Studies, China was close to launching its third aircraft carrier probably within three to six months. The aircraft carrier was launched on June 17, 2022, with the hull number 18. Some people in Western media were worried about the name because Fujian is a province in China that's right across from Taiwan. However, a spokesperson from the Chinese Navy explained that it's normal for Chinese carriers to be named after provinces, following their naming rules. Other Chinese carriers like Liaoning and Shandong are also named after provinces. The third carrier is expected to have a larger air wing. In September 2016, a prototype of the J-15 carrier-based fighter was seen being launched using a catapult system at the Shenyang Aircraft Corporation. A ground-based test facility was created to simulate aircraft catapult operations for the third carrier. In 2018, defense analyst Kyle Mizukami predicted that the carrier would carry around 40 fighter aircraft, as well as transport planes and airborne early warning and control aircraft. In 2020, the KJ-600 carrier-based AEW and C aircraft began test flights. In 2021, analysts reported that the third carrier will operate the J-15B variant, which has Catabar capability and modern fifth-generation avionics. It also features active electronically scanned array radar, new airframes, stealth coatings, and new turbofan engines with possible thrust vectoring capability. The J-15B can launch PL-10 and PL-15 missiles. It's considered an interim 4.5 generation carrier based fighter until a dedicated fifth generation successor is ready. An upgraded version of the Shenyang FC-31 prototype stealth fighter unofficially named the J-35, is suspected to be that fifth-generation fighter chosen for the Fujin. In April 2023, the third carrier began tests for its power and anchoring, and it's expected to start tests in the sea later in 2023 or early 2024. Then in November 2023, they started testing the electromagnetic catapult on board. On January 2, 2024, a news program showed aerial footage of the Fujin, where one could clearly see its three tracks for launching planes. There was also a pretend version of an aircraft meant for carriers parked on the back deck. In January 2024, it was doing tests where it's anchored in place to get ready for its first trip out to sea. Song Jongping, who knows a lot about the Chinese military, said they plan to do several trips to sea in 2024 for more testing. But as advanced and sophisticated this new carrier is, the United States aircraft carrier is a worthy rival. This nation possesses a series of nuclear-powered aircraft carriers called the Gerald R. Ford class. They plan to have 10 of these ships to replace older carriers, starting with the first one, the Gerald R. Ford, which will replace the Enterprise, and later the Nimitz class carriers. These new carriers have a similar shape to the Nimitz class, but come with updated technologies like the electromagnetic aircraft launch system 
or emails from the CBNX CBN21 program. They also have other design improvements to make them more efficient and cheaper to run, like needing smaller crews. The class is named after former U.S. President Gerald R. Ford. CBN 7th 8 was ordered in 2008 and joined the Navy on July 22, 2017. The second ship in the class, the John F. Kennedy, is expected to start service in 2025. This class aircraft carriers have features like advanced arresting gear, automation reducing crew size, updated missile systems, advanced radar, electromagnetic aircraft launch system, new nuclear reactor design, stealth features, and the ability to carry various aircraft, including drones. They also have a more aft island location and are designed to sustain high sortie rates for extended periods. The Nimitz-class aircraft carriers have been important for U.S. military strategy since the first one was built in 1975. These carriers weigh about 100,000 tons when they're fully loaded and can go really fast, stay at sea for 90 days without stopping, and launch planes to hit targets hundreds of miles away. For example, the USS Theodore Roosevelt once spent 159 days at sea during Operation Enduring Freedom without needing to visit a port or refuel. Although the Nimitz design has been updated with new technologies over the years, it's not able to support the latest advances as well. One problem is that it doesn't generate enough electrical power, and it's getting heavier with each upgrade, which can affect its stability. To address these issues, the U.S. Navy started a program called CVN-21, which later became the Gerald R. Ford class carriers. They made improvements by using new technologies and designing the ships more efficiently. Some changes include making the flight deck bigger, improving how weapons and materials are handled, using a new propulsion system that needs fewer people to run it, and moving the control tower to a different spot on the ship. They've also developed new systems like the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, Advanced Arresting Gear, and Ship Self-Defense System. These upgrades will allow the new carriers to launch more planes, generate more power with less fuel, and make life better for the crew. Catapult, number four on the Nimitz class carriers can't launch fully loaded aircraft due to low wing clearance. The movement of weapons has been made faster with higher capacity weapons elevators. These elevators are positioned to avoid aircraft movement areas, reducing traffic problems. The new Bechtel A1B reactors on the Gerald R. Ford class carriers are smaller, simpler, and more powerful than the Nimitz class reactor. It uses steam turbines for propulsion and can generate more electrical power. The ships are designed to easily integrate new technology over time and have power reserves for future upgrades. The electromagnetic aircraft launch system replaces steam catapults and is more efficient and flexible. The advanced arresting gear uses electromagnets to stop landing aircraft smoothly. The ships also have new radar systems and sensors for better surveillance. Waste management technology is being used, and future upgrades may include free electron lasers for defense. The ships were designed using advanced 3D computer-aided design software. Crew accommodations are improved with quieter berthing areas in modern facilities. However, there have been issues with the waste system plumbing, requiring expensive cleaning treatments. The development of this aircraft in the presence of the Gerald class has led to several questions and a number of curiosity has been aroused. Amongst these questions are, is the Type 3 Fujian better than the United States Gerald? Which of these aircraft carriers is the best at what it is designed to perform? We'll now compare this newly developed $13 billion aircraft carrier to the United States' most powerful cargo ship. Starting from the propulsion system on both carriers, the Fujian uses a regular way to move and consumes a lot of fuel to power everything on board. There's little information on the Fujian's propulsion system because it's new and not much information has been shared about it. But even if it has powerful engines, they probably aren't as good as the ones on the American carrier, which uses nuclear power. The USS Gerald Ford has two super advanced nuclear reactors that can keep it running smoothly for up to 25 years without needing more fuel. This means it can travel anywhere without worrying about refueling. And it can go really fast, making it able to visit allies or cause trouble for enemies all over the world. Now, on to the use of AI and automation, the Fujian carrier is going up against the most advanced American aircraft carrier ever, 
especially in terms of AI and automation. While China hasn't shared much about the systems on the Fujian, they just might surpass the American carrier systems. However, the U.S. Ford is incredibly smart, with lots of artificial intelligence built in, like automated systems and unmanned vehicles. These make running the huge ship much easier. In fact, the USS Ford only needs 4,500 crew members, while a similarly sized Nimitz-class carrier needs over 6,000. Because of this, the USS Ford has more space for weapons and life-enhancing features, like comfortable spaces and gyms, which make life better for the crew. This matters a lot because a carrier can only perform well if its crew is happy and ready for action. Then the sensors and processing systems. Both aircraft carriers have the best sensors and processing systems their countries could make. For the Fujian, it starts with a big improvement in its power system compared to older Chinese carriers. This new system makes power distribution more efficient, which helps the ship's sensors and processing systems work better. These upgraded systems include a super advanced radar called the ASA radar system. It gives the Fujian better abilities to spot and track multiple targets at the same time. It also has four S-band Dragon Eye Type 346 radars and four smaller X-band ASA radar panels to support it. The USS Ford does things differently with its sensors and processing systems. Unlike almost every other carrier in the world, the Ford has one system that does both horizon and volume search called the AY-3 multifunction radar. It's very advanced and gets data from the most sensitive sensors. This radar system can do lots of things like surveillance, air traffic control, missile communication, and spot targets from far away all by itself. Now, the air wing. The aircraft team on the Type 003 Fujian is expected to be really strong, with China using their best planes. The main one will probably be a naval version of the Shenyang FC-31, called the J-35. It's a fifth-generation fighter meant to compete with America's F-35 Lightning II. Another plane that might be on the Fujian is the Shan KJ-600, which will do similar surveillance work as the U.S. Navy's E-2D Hawkeye. Besides these fighters, Fujian will probably have more fighter jets, helicopters, and drones. But we don't know how many yet. The Fujian is an 80,000-ton carrier, while the USS Ford is 100,000 tons, so it's much bigger. That means the USS Ford can carry a lot more planes. It can hold up to 75 planes at once, including the F-35 Lightning II, which is considered the smartest fighter ever because of its advanced sensors and systems. China's J-35 is like their version of the F-35, but it's not as good. Besides the F-35, the USS Ford also has the E-2D Hawkeye, the F-A-18 Hornet, and other planes. Then the launch and arrest systems. The Fujian makes China one of only three countries with electromagnetic launch systems, along with France and the US. These systems are much better than steam-powered ones and ski ramps used on older Chinese carriers. With electromagnetic launch systems, planes can be launched quickly and safely without getting damaged. The Fujian has three of these systems, while the USS Ford has four. Both ships also have arresting gears to safely stop planes when they land. Older American carriers also have these advanced systems, giving the U.S. Navy lots of experience. It's not clear yet how much more advanced the U.S. systems are compared to China's. While the Fujian is a big step forward for China, it's still new to building such advanced carriers, and the U.S. clearly has more experience, which is why the U.S. as Ford is more capable than the Fujian. However, the United States has recognized China's increased determination in developing advanced technologies and would do something about it because the nation doesn't like to be caught off guard. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.